Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we have a new release of Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine 5.7 is here and we're going to jump into it. Now this is going to be a fairly quick video and it's going to probably have some pretty terrible audio because number one, I'm on vacation using an alternate setup, I'm using an alternate laptop and there's construction going on all around me. So we're just going to jump right in and take a quick look at what is new in Unreal Engine 5.7. Now what you'll see right here, this is the launch screen for Unreal Engine 5.7 and you can see already it's new. Uh, on top of that, we've got a bunch more in the release notes, but first we're going to jump in and take a look at a couple of features in Unreal Engine 5.7 itself. Now, the first one we've got here is a lot about procedural content. In fact, we even now have a procedural content mode inside of the editor. So if you're working with uh, procedural content stuff, there is a specialized mode for it right here. On top of that, we have a new experimental set of features one is the new procedural uh, vegetation editor, uh, which you can see right here being used to create uh, these tree models. So we're going to go ahead and check the end result out over here as soon as this finishes loading. And like I said, I am not using primary machine, which is why things are a little, little bit slower. And we're not doing too much hands-on demonstration today because it shouldn't be this slow. Anyway, you can see here is how they're generating these trees using a set of procedural setups. Uh, there are five of these available. I think they're calling them mega plants or something like that, uh, that you can get started with. Uh, so now you'll be able to generate uh, using a variety of different settings or inputs on the way in, like here. So we could change the, the car value over here. We could change the scale value over here, and then it will ultimately result in a different generated plant. But the big thing with this release is uh, this is available in experimental format, as well as Nanite foliage is now finally available. Should be a good optimization uh, feature for people using that stuff heavily in their game. And then procedural generation is now considered a live feature. Now, another new experimental feature in 5.7 enabled as a plugin, head on over to your settings, edit plugins, and search for everyone's favorite word, AI. And you're going to find there's now this uh, AI assistant. It is an experimental form. And basically, this is like a uh, Unreal Engine train chat GPT help system. Uh, you're going to find it's available here at the bottom of the Windows tab right there. Fire up the AI assistant, and then you can ask it things. Like, for example, how do I find all the actors named Bob uh, using blueprints? And then boom, it goes out. The first thing it's going to do is come back with a couple of uh, tutorial recommendations that are context sensitive. At least generally that's how it works. So there you can see how to find actors and set an actor uh, reference. And then here you're going to see step-by-step -step instructions on how to create the blueprint, including uh, I believe you can copy these into the blueprints and have it generated as a result. But here you get, uh, here is how to do it via blueprints method. And the nice thing here is it is um, history aware. So I could say, how about using C++ question mark? And then it will do it. Again, it's got the context that I want to know how to find all the actors named Bob already. So it is going to build off of that. Again, it's going to start immediately by handing me uh, recommendations. This one uh, this is the same recommendation as before. This one is on spawning. And then here you can see the generated C++ code that they recommend. Again, you can copy the code over. And that is... Uh, essentially how this tool works. So it's a nice thing if you want help. It's a, basically an AI help buddy in there and a code generator. It's a good use of AI in my opinion. So let's head on over and take a quick look at the release notes. All right, so here we go. What do we got in Unreal Engine 5.7? Well, a lot of this is about graduation. Things that have been around for a while are now considered production ready. The big one here is the new procedural content generation. It says it in the name. So this is for basically programmatically instantiating levels using a number of like blueprints as inputs, etc. cetera. Uh, there is the new PCG editor mode uh, that specializes the tooling to work with PCG. And here you can see, again, here's like creating a row of, a row of pylons using a spline in PCG uh, and create entire forest environments, etc. So a big deal there. Uh, and then on top of that, we also now have the procedural vegetation editor, which is currently experimental. You can use this to create uh, foliage and trees, etc. And we've got a couple of Quixel mega plants available for download. I believe it was five of them are now available on Fab if you want to go ahead and check that one out. Kind of shows you how this all works together. Uh, and then this release also has Nanite foliage as an experimental feature. Uh, uh, but it's for creating really dense, uh, high foliage environments, but in a performant manner. 
So that is a big thing here. But of course, that is experimental at this point in time. Production ready, though, we do finally have substrate. Now, substrate is a new material system with a bit more uh, details in there for doing things like car paint or oiled leather, etc. That is now considered ready for prime time. Something they released in 5.6 as a experimental feature. Mega Lights has now been moved from experimental over to beta. This is a way of adding a huge number of dynamic shadow casting lights and even uh, light emitting textures into your world. Uh, so a bunch of new lighting options there as well. Uh, improvements to MetaHuman Creator. So uh, there's now support for MetaHuman Creator Unreal Engine plugin on both Linux and Mac OS. Uh, on top of that, they changed the licensing so you can use MetaHuman outside of Unreal Engine. That is definitely a change as well. And then a number of other features around MetaHumans. We also have some enhancements to the in-editor animation tool set. The actual animation improvements are staggering. This is basically going to start replacing your DCC tool. And the number of times you're going to have to do a round trip back to like a 3D Studio's Max Maya or Blender to do animation tweaks is getting less and less and less as they add more of these features. So there's a new refactored animation mode that streamlines the workflow. Uh, we've got IK retargeting features in here as well. Uh, then we've got a new rigging tools, uh, updated skeletal editor, so you can seamlessly move between placing bones, painting weights, and sculpting blend shapes. Uh, and then we also got some new uh, one-way physics world collisions animation tools here as well. You can see the results of those in action right here in this little video. Uh, a number of animation tools there. There's also a new dependency view, so you can visualize data flowing through the control rig or the modular control rig uh, with clarity, so you can see in action right there. A number of things on virtual production. So this is if you're using Unreal Engine for um, movie or film work. Uh, not really something we cover too much on the channel, but a number of improvements in that area as well. Uh, so uh, we also again have uh, the new AI assistant that has been integrated in. That one is added via a plugin that you are going to need to enable. As by the way, is the procedural generation and Nanite foliage. Those are all uh, as plugins that you need to actually go ahead and turn on. And then you get into the full release notes and you'll notice there's just so much more in here. A bit more detail about the new Mega Light system. Uh, improvements to Niagara heterogeneous volumes, details about substrate, etc. So if you want to get into a bunch more detail about what's in this release, you get an idea. I'll just scroll as we go and take a look to my right at the scroll bar. So there, there is a ton here, but I am tempting fate by keeping going because there's going to be a giant crash or a chainsaw starting up or something in the background any second now, and I'm not going to risk that. So I am going to stop the video right here. So if you're interested, uh, Unreal Engine 5.7 is available right now uh, in the uh, Epic Game Launcher. Uh, you go ahead and download it. It is considered, uh, this is the production ready version. You can use it. And again, the big thing here are substrate straight and uh, procedural generation are now considered uh, production ready. And then we've got some new things like Nanite uh, foliage and the new uh, procedural uh, vegetation editor, etc. in here as well. A nice release. Unreal Engine 5, like 5 point X releases have always been very impressive with the amount of content in them. I would actually say Unreal Engine has the most in each release. At least that's my opinion. So let me know what you think of the 5.7 release. And again, if this sounds bad, I apologize. I'm working in a, uh, a vacation zone, as you may be able to tell. All right, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.